Hello, my name is Al Palmer. I'm a retired electronics instructor. I've taught electronics from the high school level vocational tech center all the way up to college level. And I've uh, taught almost every class in a two year electronics technology program. Um, I've taught around the area at several different educational institutions. And when I retired, my last employer said, I could have my smart board and my projector, which I used a lot in my lectures. And so I was setting up to put some of my lectures online, which I thought might be helpful to students who are in a similar program. And, you know, use some of the educational techniques that I have learned throughout the years and make them available to students who, who were uh, working in a similar program. So I set it all up and put it together and turned it on and my pen tray quit working. And the pen tray is the thing that holds the pens for the smart board. This is a Smart Technology Series 600 uh, smart board, which I know is old, uh, but uh, as I'm doing my research on the line, I, I find that there's a lot of these out there with broken pen trays. And so I took the pen tray apart uh, well, first thing I called Smart Technologies and says, can you fix these? And they said, no, we'll send you a new one for, I don't know, $350 or something. And they were online for about 40 if you wanted to buy them. But I think the failure mode here uh, it might be fairly popular. And so I'm going to walk you through the repair that I did. And I'm going to walk you through the components I had to replace and I have a document camera so we can get close-ups and we can I can show you what I did and if you have this problem with your pen tray maybe I can help you fix it so we're gonna start with that block diagram schematic of what's on the pen tray um, it, it is removed very simply it's got two connectors down at the bottom you can unsnap those and the pen tray comes off the front of the board and, and it's connected with a connector called an RJ11. And an RJ11 is the connector used on the old telephone. So hook your telephone into the wall. It's very similar to an RJ45. No, sorry. RJ45, which is used in a Cat5 cable. But uh, these are only six conductor and they're used for telephone applications. So that's what hooks the microcontroller, which is on the back of the board about right here, to the actual electronics in the pen tray. So once you get inside the pen tray, I'm going to show you the circuitry that's used in there and uh, maybe we can get it up and running again. Okay, so first thing we have, uh, see my smart board works and it pen works. It's telling me I'm using the black pen. Great. Incoming connector, six pin um, from the RJ11. Uh, That's underneath the connector down here. And if I unhook it, then my pen will stop working. So it's just a little pull, a little tab, and pull it out. And in from the RJ11, uh, three or four of the six pins are used for power supply. And the reason this has as an elaborate power supply is, as it does is because it can hook up to a 20 foot USB cable. And the problem with a 20 foot USB cable is sometimes your five volts isn't all the way up to five volts uh, when it gets to the end of the cable. So they've got some voltage regulation circuitry in here that they're using. So the first thing that happens is it comes in the door from the RJ11 and it goes to a reverse bias diode. So this is gonna be plus five volts or less uh, depending on the length of the cable. And it goes, in, oh, oops, sorry. Excuse, oh, I get to use my eraser. Put the diode in backwards, sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna go in like this. The diode is facing up so that it's in the off position and the five volts comes in and goes to the diode. And then there's a little filter cap there in case there's noise on the cable from fl fluorescent lights or whatever. And then the very next component is uh, a very typical 3.3 uh, th uh, volt regulator. So all this is is a uh, is a uh, an, uh, linear regulator. It's just uh, whatever comes in the door, five or less, four and a half, whatever, and it drops it down to 3.3. So 3.3 volts is what comes out of this regulator. It's uh, very similar to the 7800 series. So it has uh, it, you should have a little bit of a capacitor connected from input to ground and from output to ground in that little capacitor. It keeps the uh, regulator from uh, over and under regulating and starting to seesaw. It's not critical with these capacitors. If you look them up in the data books, it's just like 0.1 microfarads or something very small. I put in one microfarad tantalums because they have good high frequency uh, characteristics and, uh, and they're 
polarize, so I had to make sure the polarity was right. But it's just something to stabilize the regulator. Not every 7800 series regulator needs that. This is a surface mounted device, so it's very small, and it's got basically three pins in, ground, out, boom, two capacitors on it. The next circuit is where I think the problem actually originated. And so there's a chip in here, called, and it's made by Maxon, and it's a Max 66. And I've used this circuit before, and it's um, it's it's a f fairly fun little chip. Uh, it can make you it basically has one capacitor and an eight-pin surface-mounted chip, and it will make either negative voltages or it can be used as a voltage doubler. They're using it as a voltage doubler, and so what they're doing is they're hooking this thing up like this, and uh, basically that's basically the whole circuit. It's got a capacitor right here. And this is the capacitor that failed. This is what started the mess. This capacitor failed and leaked out its electrolyte and then it etched the foil off the board and, and made it so the, um, some components failed and, and that kind of stuff. And so this is what started it. So the Max 66 in this application is a voltage doubler. And so what happens is you're coming in with 3.3 volts right here and then out came about 6.5. And roughly double what was being put into it. And what it does is it charges up this capacitor to the 3.3 volts and then electronically puts it in series with the voltage coming in and adds the two together. So it's just a, it's a adder circuit. It's not good for a lot of current, maybe uh, 50 or 100 milliamps. And, and so, and that's all it does for low current applications. It's surface mounted once again. So it's um, fairly small on the board. And then from 6.5, it goes to another regulator, uh, which is basically another regulator just like this one, only instead of 3.3 volts, it's set for five volts. So this, this is taking whatever's coming in the door, dropping it down to 3.3, doubling it up to 6.6, .6, dropping it back down to five. And this is what runs the circuitry in the pen tray. And um, once again, it also has the, um, the, the stabilizing capacitors that are right here uh, that keep it from oscillating in certain you know noisy electrically noisy environments and that allows it to uh, uh, provide the circuitry to the rest of the pen tray and the rest of the pen tray it's got weird circuits in it I didn't ring it all out because that didn't fail uh, so I um, when I put this together, I found um, seven segment decoder drivers in here that are decoding the output from the pen sensors and driving the LEDs, and they're doing weird stuff with that. I did, like I said, I didn't ring that all out. So the rest of the circuitry is beyond here, and then it sends data through a TXRX lines on the RJ11 back to the microcontroller, which then talks to the computer. So uh, this is the power supply, and this is where I think you're gonna encounter a lot of your problems. So next step, we get out the document camera and and I'll show you what these parts look like. All right, so I've now had a shower and changed all my clothes, and we're gonna continue on with uh, how to remove the pen tray and uh, get it apart. And I'm gonna show you what the parts that I put in. So, um, start with taking off all of the stuff. Oh, I need to shut this down. So, I'm just gonna disconnect right here the USB cable and the board goes dark. Now, down here is a RJ11 I talked about. It's just like a phone connector. Push a little button on the side. It's now unconnected right there. And then two little snap clips on the bottom. And I pull those down and, and there it is. There's the pen tray, like that. Now, I'm gonna take the back off this and go in and show you where these components actually are. So start with the screwdriver and remove the 12 screws. All right, so take the bottom off. There's the circuit board that runs the smart tray. I'm gonna. There's a little plastic clip right here. I don't know if you can see that. That you got to squeeze these together, and the board pops off of here very easily. Now, the board. I don't know what we're 
looking at you looking at the camera okay so the board comes in two pieces that connect together right here and I'm just gonna pull those apart it's just a little eight pin connector Boom. and all the weird electronics is at this end of the board which is uh, where the RJ 11s were now this is the bottom of the board and these are the two RJ 11s one says RJ, uh, what does it say? Input one, input two. The board was connected into input one. And you flip this over, and this is where all the crap happens that uh, failed. Now, this board leaked. These capacitors leaked out. These capacitors originally looked like this. Now, are those visible? They're surface mounted 47 microfarad 16 volt capacitors. I did not have any surface mount capacitors and so I put in regular 47. There's plenty of room when you flip this over to put full size parts. I could have ordered special capacitors that were like this but I had these in a drawer and I went these will be fine. So uh, I understand they're not what I took out. So here's what I took out. Here's what I put in. So let's look at this a little bit. If you refer back to the schematic Here's the two RJ11s. Is that visible on there? Okay. Here's the reverse bias diode. Now, my board did not have uh, a capacitor in this location right here. But it's right across the 5 volts that comes in from the RJ11 from the microcontroller. I soldered two little loops on there so that I could hook up a power supply at 5 volts and make this thing run when it wasn't on the board. Uh, wasn't plugged into the microcontroller. So uh, when I was troubleshooting this, that's where I connected my little mini grabbers with five volts and made the board come alive. So uh, right here is the first regulator. And that regulator is, takes whatever's coming in and drops it down to 3.3 .3 volts. Now, these two capacitors that are right here were cantalums and they were uh, affected by the leaking capacitor uh, that etched this stuff off the board. So I just replaced them. Their value is not critical. I think I put in tens at 25 volts and there's no more than five volts around here. So the voltage wasn't critical. And all they do is keep this thing from uh, going into oscillation. So this capacitor is uh, regulating the output of the regulator at 3.3 volts. So this is the little flying capacitor voltage doubler circuit chip right here. It's the MAX 660. And I, I know when I put on the board, I wrote MAX on 66, and it's a MAX on 660. It's the flying capacitor chip that can be used as a voltage doubler or to create negative voltages. And so uh, the 3.3 volts comes off the uh, first regulator and it goes to this Maxon 660 which charges up this capacitor and then uh, instantly moves the capacitor in series of the 3.3 so the two add up and it gives you 6.6 .6 volts and then goes back and charges it up to 3.3 and then back in series and gives you 6.6 .6. and it does that several thousand times a second and so the output of this uh, voltage doubler should be twice the voltage of the output of the first regulator. So 3.3 in, 6.6 out, and that's what this capacitor right here does. And you put a voltmeter on there, and that should be charged up to 6.6 .6 volts. So I got that all working, and then that voltage doubles back over to here, which is a 5-volt regulator. So 6.6 .6 goes into that from the voltage doubler, and then it's dropped back down to 5. And uh, I, I toyed with just putting in a 78L05 low voltage regulator, but this regulator in here is specifically designed to need very little overhead because uh, regular 78L05 needs at least uh, 6 or 7 volts to put out a, a, a steady 5 at 100 milliamps. And so this thing can do it with, uh, you know, 6.5 or 6 volts. And so the 6.6 .6 that comes into here yeah, easily um, is regulated back down to 5. So that's basically a 3-terminal regulator, and that's what runs the rest of the chips. Now, way down at the other end, these chips down here, as weird as that seems, are seven segment decoder drivers. I don't know how they're used in the circuit. There's two of them. They run in parallel. You can look up their pinouts on them. And they are designed to uh, 
run the boards, LEDs, and sense the uh, inputs when you push the buttons. But I didn't ring out that part of the circuit, so I don't know all about it. Um, but that part worked. However, one ran on the 3.3 from the first regulator, and the second one was running on the 5. I just went to pin um, 15 and uh, 8 and 16, uh, VCC and ground to just make sure the voltages were there. And one of them had 3.3 and the other one had 0. So that's what made me go back to the second regulator. So I'm going to go back down here again to where the second regulator is, and this is putting out a healthy 5. Now, the chips at the other end of the board are talking, sending data back and forth to the microcontroller, and I wanted to show you if you can see it very clear, very fine in here. There was a bad trace right here where you can see it with the pencil. And right here, this blue wire, those traces were eaten off the board by the electrolyte that was inside the flying capacitor. So when I replaced that capacitor, the liquid that had poured out of their head had dissolved those traces. And so what I did was I took a very fine piece of 22 gauge wire, which is what this is, and it's stranded wire, and I stripped it, and then I took a single strand of that wire and I taped it down to the board at the where I saw the discontinuity of the conductor and then I I took the um, the etch resist off or the uh, photo resist off of it that makes these board green so you can't see the copper I scraped it off with a knife and then I laid that single strand of wire down and I made a copper trace that went over the bad spot on the trace and I also had to ring out where this lead was going back to uh, to the other power supply, and I had to and that one was long enough that it it went around a little bit, and I had to use insulated wire on there. So I just had to fix some traces, which is nothing more than see a trace on the board, put an ohmmeter on both sides, and see if there's continuity. Some of these traces drop through the board and they come out the other side, <clears throat> and so when I was running those through, I just rung out the traces and when I saw I didn't have data getting from here to there with the oscilloscope uh, I just made sure the traces were good and uh, basically once I fixed all three of these power supplies the first one that drops it down to 3.3 the doubler and then the voltage um, limiter uh, voltage regulator back down to five again I was up and running except for that last trace that put data back to the microcontroller anyways I got the board up and running and so now I can continue on the rest of my um, educational video. So thanks for watching.